Many thanks to Love, Jerb, Skillspeeder Gaming, Jaren, Daisy Podcast, and Taggy's Tag West for making this video possible. Daisy will now punish you for not looking after your crops in this patch, so in this video we're going to be looking at the only bugs in Daisy that are confirmed to be a feature, which of the growable foods are best to grow in your base, and whether Garden Lime actually does anything for your garden. Welcome to Gardening with Bobo. This week, we're in the coastal region of Chernerus, a verdant landscape shaped by horticulture and ripe with vegetation of all varieties. Yet there are only four foods that grow here. Tomatoes, Zuck Chinese, peppers, and pumpkins. These seed packets have 10 seeds inside and can be found commonly inside greenhouses. However, you can't grow food here yet, so you'll need a shovel or a pickaxe to create a garden plot. Once you've found one of these, plant your seeds and pour a generous amount of unleaded gasoline over the seeds. This can take a while, so it might be night time by the time you finish, in which case you'll need to see. So light a flip. Or instead of using gasoline, you could just use water like everybody else, and without water, seeds won't grow at all. So you can either wait for the rain to water your seeds, or you can water them yourself with a liquid storing container. Now whether you use dirty water or clean water doesn't make a difference and no, you can't get cholera from eating food watered with dirty water. Tomatoes and peppers have five different growth states, watered, seedling, early growth, blossoming and fully grown. Where zucchinis and pumpkins have six, watered, seedling, early growth, budding, blossoming and fully grown. Here is how long it takes for each food to grow. Like I said before, the zucchini has six growth states, starting from when it's watered at one to fully grown at six. It takes two minutes for a watered zucchini to become a seedling, but after that it takes one minute for each stage. This goes for all plants, the watering stage takes twice as long as any other stage. Adding plant material to a plot will increase its growth rate by 20% so it'll be 20% faster, and if you add garden lime it will grow 25% faster than normal, so they're definitely worth using to speed things up. You can find garden lime in industrial locations and in order to get plant material you will need to pull out plants that have already grown or destroy plots that have plants in. The more the plants have grown, the more plant material you will get. Garden lime and plant material also increase how much food you get from each plant and doesn't deplete over time which means you only need to fertilize it once and every time the food grows back you will get the increased amount. However, food doesn't seem to grow back on its own. I waited 23 hours and food here never grew back. Yet when the server restarts, food does grow back instantly. So I'm guessing there's currently no mechanic for regrowing food because server restarts do this. Anyway, here's how much food you get from each plant. Seven tomatoes, two zucchinis, three peppers, and two pumpkins, with the pumpkins producing one set of slices each. With plant material, this number increases to 9 for tomatoes and plus 1 for the rest of them. And with garden lime, it hits the maximum of 11 for tomatoes and another plus 1 for the rest of them. One thing plant material and lime don't do is protect your crops from disease, which has a 20% chance of occurring at any growth stage. The only way to prevent this disease is to spray your plants with disinfectant spray, which is found in medical locations. If you don't spray your plants and they become diseased, there is a 100% chance the plant will die when it reaches maturity. Now you can either spray the plant when it begins the watered stage to guarantee no plants become diseased, or you can spray plants that have these white bugs on the leaves, which will save you a lot when it comes to disinfectant spray. However, don't be tricked by this disinfect option, it does nothing to stop disease, only the option that says apply works, and you have to complete the entire animation or the plant has a chance to become diseased still. Once fully grown, a diseased plant cannot be sprayed to cure it and gives you only rotten food, but you can pull out the plant to get plant material, so they're not entirely useless. The rotten food, like ripe food, can be used to collect seeds still, and know the seeds of rotten food won't make you sick, even with a low immune system stat. If you don't pull out diseased plants, they will disappear in 20 to 30 minutes and leave nothing behind, so pulling them out is a good idea to protect plant material and seeds. When cutting out seeds, you get 13 seeds from all four growable foods, but pumpkins allow you to keep the food and the seeds. If we use Asmondian's nutrition pyramid, which displays how much energy and hydration you get per food, and then combine it with the yields we got earlier from growing food with different methods, we can work out how much energy we get per seed, which tells us which plant is the best in day Z. So these are the energy values you get from eating tomatoes, zucchinis, peppers, and pumpkins, and I did retest these for day Z 1.11. Pumpkins look to be way out in front, but remember that you only get two pumpkins per seed where you get a massive seven for tomatoes, putting tomatoes in front for energy per seed. 
And when you add plant material, that gap grows larger and with lime, even larger still. So tomatoes are without question the best food to grow in Daisy, providing almost twice as much energy as any other food. So per full garden plot, this is how much energy you get using garden lime, and this is how much hydration you get. Tomatoes are clear winners in both. Now if that wasn't enough, they also provide the most energy and hydration per slot, so they are the best grown food in the game, the best grown food in the game to store, and the best grown food in the game to transport to, but remember to dry them before you store them to substantially reduce the decaying process. I did a lot of other tests while tending to my garden, so here's a lot of random myth busting. Disease cannot spread to other nearby plants and healthy plants cannot become diseased once fully grown. Rubbing alcohol doesn't work to prevent disease and combining water with disinfectant to water plants doesn't work either, nor does spraying the seeds before planting. The sun doesn't help plants grow at all because they grow at night too at the same speed and even inside buildings they will still grow. Don't worry about trees, canopies or even buildings blocking the rain from hitting your crops because rain finds a way to water your plants no matter what. Even inside a shed, inside another shed, under camouflage netting for stealth, the rain found a way to water these plants. The order you put lime, seeds and water in a plot doesn't make a difference, although using lime or plant material first can sometimes cause plants to not grow at all, so be aware of that. Using plant material from diseased plant cannot increase the chances of getting diseased in new plants. You can only place plots on grass minus a few exceptions, so you can't place garden plots inside a body of water to automatically water the plants. Heavy fog doesn't water plants, but the intensity of rain does increase the speed at which seeds become watered, with hot and cold climates having no effect on plant growth. As my way of thanking those people that grow crops on the coast for fresh spawns, here's a bonus tip for you because you've saved my life many times. You only need seeds and a plot making tool to grow food for other players. Simply wait for the rain to grow your plants and they'll grow on their own. If you have any more tips or want to ask a question about cultivation and how it works, you can do so in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a good day.